Happy Sunday, and welcome to Wesley Church Online. I'm Christina, and I want to thank you so much for spending part of your weekend with us. Right now, we are here now, gathered digitally to worship the Almighty God. This means that you are standing right now on holy ground. Remember, God loves you, and so do we. Also, today is Communion Sunday. Please remember to prepare your own bread and juice as we share in Christ's table online. Let us begin with the call to worship. I'll read the light print, and I invite you to read aloud the bold print. To you, O Lord, we lift up our soul. Make us to know your ways, O Lord. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Good and upright is the Lord. Please join me in the opening prayer. Almighty God, blessed are we to worship and lift your name on high. We are in harvest season, a time when we gather with family and friends at farms, corn mazes, and pumpkin patches, spending time for fellowship and gathering fruits and vegetables before winter's rest. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for the bounty we receive, not just the bounty of food, but of relationships and family. We give you all the honor and praise. In Jesus we pray, amen. Now let's enter into a time of worship. spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. And I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it, but still you yourself away Oh, the overwhelming never-ending reckless love of God Yeah, yeah, yeah Was your foe still your love far from me? You have been so so good to me. When I felt no worth, you gave it all for me. You have been so so kind. Still you give yourself 
mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me no there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me no 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 there's no shadow Once again, I'd like to welcome you all to Wesley Church online. Be sure to say hi in the live chat box to the right of your screen. Pastor James and our church family will be there to reach out and connect with you. We are a church that prays, and there are two ways you can share your prayer requests with our community. One, you can write in your prayer requests in the live chat box, and we can pray for you right now. Two, submit a prayer request at wumcsp.org slash prayer, and you'll be included in our weekly prayer list that goes out to the whole church each Monday. 
Pastor James says that if you feel like something is missing and you want to experience life with God in a deeper way, you need to join a small group. Groups meet online Monday through Thursday evenings and folks come together to study God's Word based on the Sunday sermon and simply share life together. Go to wumcsp.org slash small groups and sign up for a group today. Next week, we begin a new exciting sermon series titled The Social Dilemma. Social media has become a key component of our daily lives and have been linked to causing record levels of depression in young people. Unwinding of society and extreme political polarization to the point of crumbling democracy. Based on the critically acclaimed Netflix documentary, this sermon series will open the scriptures to take the first step in battling social media manipulation and liberating our minds that what is truly important in life and society. In fact, here's a trailer. Mass chaos, loneliness, more polarization, more election hacking, more inability to focus on the real issues. We're toast. Every single action you take is carefully monitored and recorded. White House Task Force urging you to climbing for Followed by generation a is more anxious, more depressed. Fake news spreads six times faster than true news. We're being bombarded with rumors. Finally, for all youths, tonight at 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., we will be gathering in Fellowship Hall and participating in an Ignite Communities Watch Party. There will be exciting music, worship, and time for fun. Bring your mask and a hungry spirit, and we hope to see you all then. If you'd like to know how to join in on these or just want some more information, be sure to contact the church office at office at wumcsp.org. Today we are concluding our worship series titled Ghost Stories. As Halloween is the second most celebrated holiday of the year, it is hard to escape its influence on our culture. For three weeks, we've been sharing some ghostly stories from our biblical traditions. Today, Pastor James will be giving a sermon titled Creepy Happenings and share how even amidst trouble and challenge, God is making a way. I'm sure right now someone is coming to mind who needs to experience worship today. I encourage you to click the invite button or send them this link now, wesley.online.church. That's wesley.online.church. If you're new with us, thank you for choosing to spend part of your day with us. If you hear anything, know that God loves you and so do we. Make sure to fill out the I'm New Here card and we would love to connect with you this week. Let us pray the Wesley Covenant Prayer. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will, place me with whom you will, put me to doing, put me to suffering, let me be put to work for you or set aside for you. Praised for you or criticized for you, let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and fully surrender all things to your glory and service. And now, O oh wonderful and holy God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, you are mine, and I am yours. So be it, and the covenant which I have made on earth, let it also be made in heaven. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today I'll be reading Daniel chapter 5, verses 17 to 30. Then Daniel answered in the presence of the king, Let your gifts be for yourself, or give your rewards to someone else. Nevertheless, I will read the writing to the king, and let him know the interpretation. O King, the Most High God gave your father Nebuchadnezzar kingship, greatness, glory, and majesty. And because of the greatness that he gave him, all peoples, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. He killed those he wanted to kill, kept alive those he wanted to keep alive, honored those he wanted to honor, and degraded those he wanted to degrade. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened so that he acted proudly, he was deposed from his kingly throne, and his glory was stripped from him. 
He was driven from human society and his mind made like that of an animal. His dwelling was with the wild asses. He was fed grass like oxen and his body was baited with the dew of heaven until he learned that the Most High God had sovereignty over the kingdom of mor mortals and set over it whomever, whomever he will. And you, Belkashar, his son, have not humbled your heart, even though you knew all of this. You have exalted yourself against the Lord of heaven. The vessels of his temple have brought in before you, and you and your lords, your wives and your concubines, have been drinking wine from them. You have praised the God of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which you not see or hear or know, but the God in whose power is your very breath, and to whom belong all your ways you have not honored. So from his presence the hand was sent, and this writing was inscribed. And this is the writing that was inscribed. Mean, mean, tekel, and parson. This is the interpretation of the matter. Mean, God has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed on the scale and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then Belchazar gave the command, and Daniel was clothed in purple, a chain of gold was put around his neck, and a proclamation was made concerning him that he should rank third in the kingdom. That very night, Belchazar, the Chaldean king, was killed. The word of God for the people of God. story what and no hey pastor James here I'm so grateful that God has led you to join us for worship uh, today we're concluding our sermon series titled ghost stories uh, yesterday was Halloween the second most popular holiday in the United States uh, but of course, due to COVID, with PVC candy tubes and even some virtual Halloween parties, Halloween looked very different this year. So for the month of October 2020, rather than avoid Halloween, we spent time retelling the ghost stories found in our scriptures and remembering that our God is the light in the darkness and our source of overcoming fear. So let us pray before we begin today's message. Please join me. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I remember when I was little, uh, there was one thing I could count on every October, and that was watching reruns of the 1964 TV series, The Addams Family. Now, I first got drawn into The Addams Family back uh, by the 1991 film, uh, it had Christopher Lloyd and Christina Ricci, and I was intrigued by just how strange everything was, from the odd conglomeration of characters of, of all shapes and sizes to the strange but menacingly memorable theme song, right? right? <laughs> okay, so um, however strange the others, the m most bizarre thing about the show was um, the disembodied hand that runs around, snapping to get attention, that has a mind of its own. Right, it would be a, a strange scene to see a hand like thing, just running around doing things without a body. This is not too different from what we're about to witness in our scripture reading today. Uh, but if there's one thing that pulled me into the movies and TV shows like The Addams Family, it's just how just how real people get when they are afraid, right? No matter how uppity someone is, uh, they become just like everyone else when they are scared. That in the midst of creepy happenings, who we really are comes out. And this is what we find in our scripture lesson today. Uh, in this story, we have two characters that I like to focus on. 
two characters. On the one hand, we have Belshazzar, the supposed king of Babylon, who comes from the line of Nebuchadnezzar, right? Nebuchadnezzar, if you remember, was the one who conquered Judah and destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. Last month, we talked about Ezekiel and the traumatic Babylonian exile of the Judeans. And this story is happening during this timeline. In fact, this, we are, this story is at the end of the empire called Babylon. Now, I say supposed king because for a long time, historians knew that uh, Nabonidus was said to be the last king of Babylon, not Belshazzar, who is Nabonidus' eldest son. But more, more recently, archaeologists discovered evidence that proved that uh, at the last part of his reign, Nabonidus actually lived in Arabia and left the conduct of the kingdom of Babylon to his eldest son, the prince Belshazzar. So later in the story, Belshazzar uh, offers the third highest place in the kingdom. This is because technically he is actually second in charge and his father is still technically the king. So uh, the Medes and the Persians have surrounded the city. Babylon is in imminent danger, but King Belshazzar uh, is confident in Babylon's defenses. And so rather than being in battle or getting ready to fight, is found hosting a party with thousands of people in his palace with the wine uh, flowing uh, in a show of power and pride, essentially declaring himself a god more powerful than uh, God, the God of Israel. Belshazzar orders that the silver and gold goblets stolen from the temple in Jerusalem be filled with wine to drink. And they all raise their glasses to praise their own might, their own power, their own abilities. And it's during this debauchery that our friend Thing appears. Well, not Thing, but a hand nonetheless begins to write on the wall. And Belshazzar freaks out. Verse 5 and 6 says this, Immediately the fingers of a human hand appeared and began writing on the plaster of the wall of the royal palace next to the lampstand. The king was watching the hand as it wrote. Then the king's face turned pale and his thoughts terrified him. His, his limbs gave way and his knees knocked together. In this situation, who do you call? Ghostbusters! Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> so Belshazzar brings in all these enchanters, soothsayers, magicians to figure out what the writing on the wall says, but no one can figure out what the words mean. And finally, uh, the queen remembers a man named Daniel who was gifted with knowledge and, and was recognized by the previous king, King Nebuchadnezzar, and they call him in. So here enters the second character to focus on today, Daniel. From his entrance to this, to this scene, Daniel is immediately offered many riches and glory. In verse 16, Belshazzar says this, But I have heard that you can give interpretation and solve problems. Now, if you are able to read the writing and tell me its interpretation, you shall be clothed in purple, have a chain of gold around your neck, and ranked third in the kingdom. Uh, but notice here Daniel's response in verse 17, which is the, the beginning of today's reading. It says this, Then Daniel answered in the presence of the king, Let your gifts be for yourself, or give your rewards to someone else. Nevertheless, I will read the writings to the king and let him know the interpretation. So here we have two very different characters, Belshazzar and Daniel. They stand in stark contrast to each other. Belshazzar is found partying while his enemies siege the city. Daniel faces the problem presented before him head on. Belshazzar pours his own wine into the cups meant for worshiping God. Daniel cannot be bribed or pressured into reading the message. Instead, he boldly pronounces God's judgment on Belshazzar. In verses 24 uh, to 28, Daniel interprets the writing on the wall, and it says this, So from his presence the hand was sent, and this writing was inscribed. And this is the writing that was inscribed, Mene, Mene, Tekel, and Parson. This is the interpretation of the matter. Mene, God has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Harsh words to bring to the most powerful person in the room. Now, uh, despite the gloomy message of doom, Belshazzar keeps his word, and Daniel is declared the third of all the kingdom, it says. And Belshazzar is then killed 
and Babylon is taken over that night. Right? So it's really interesting that Daniel actually only held this post for just a few hours. And this shows how temporary the awards and accolades of this world are. Right? Later in the kingdom under King Darius that succeeds uh, Belshazzar, Daniel is also promoted then, but that was because of God, not Belshazzar. Right? That is the story uh, of the lion's den that you're all familiar with that happens later on in Daniel's life. But here we see that Belshazzar had not learned from the misfortunes of Nebuchadnezzar, and now he too will lose his kingdom and his life. But Daniel's life and his ways were measured, and he was honored by God. Some of you are here today and are in the middle of difficult circumstances. Life has been hard. People have treated you unfairly. Situations of fear are coming over you. Maybe during this pandemic, you saw sides of yourself you haven't seen before. You too are finding that in the midst of creepy happenings, who you really are comes out. Belshazzar had faith in himself, in his own strength, his own supposed title, his own abilities. The scene of partying around while, uh, while a, a hostile army surrounded the city reminds us of the spirit of our present age. Many today have the idea that the best response to the seeming danger of the times is to forget about it and escape into the pursuit of pleasure. But there comes a time when the hand of God appears and the writing on the wall cannot be understood and only brings terror. Daniel, on the other hand, had faith in God and in God alone. No wealth or fame or glory could sway him. He did not fear the presence of a king. He only spoke truth for God. And Daniel was able to read the writing on the wall and recognize it for what it ultimately was. The revelation that God's hand is on all things. Today is All Saints Day. The day we remember the Daniels of our of every time and place, honoring those who live faithfully and shared their faith with us. Maybe you had a grandmother or a father or a teacher or a friend who was a Daniel, a saint who lived a life full of faith and inspired you to do the same. I invite you as we conclude this sermon and go into communion to write in the names of the saints that have gone before us in the chat below. Beloved, you have a choice today. Will you be a Belshazzar or a Daniel? Will you believe only in yourself, chase after pleasure, and avoid the danger around you to the point where God's revelation will terrify you? Or will you trust in God and in God alone as Daniel did and the saints that have gone before us did and find joy and peace when you too begin to recognize God's hand upon your life? We are blessed today in 2020 because we have God's writings too right here uh, in this book. All through the scriptures, God steps in to save the oppressed, to, to lead them by the hand to freedom and safety. God's hands are the hands of liberation. They had the power to stop and transform then, and they have the power to do so today. Whatever monster, bully we are facing today, this week, this year, I would encourage us to be a church that remembers that God is always reaching out to us. We must be willing to take the hand of God and trust that these hands will get us through whatever creepy happenings we are facing. Church, will you be a Belshazzar or a Daniel? Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the Holy Scriptures, your writings that are written down for us to see. And Lord, as we read through it, we are challenged and we are hopeful. Lord, we are thankful that you are God and that you are in control and that faith in you will lead to new light and new hope. Lord, give us the courage to be like Daniel, to have faith in you and in you alone. Lord, to have eyes that can see the writings on the wall and recognize your revelation all around us. Lord, we want to be a church that is like Daniel. Give us, grant us that courage, that wisdom, that patience for your honor and for your glory alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, I invite you all to share the names of the saints uh, in the chat box. Uh, and in doing so, invite them to join us in this holy banquet. Uh, in a holy mystery, when we share in this table, 
We are sitting alongside our loved ones who have gone ahead. I ask you now to just draw your attention towards the communion elements that you've prepared as we come to the table of grace. And may we, as we eagerly wait for the day we can all partake in this meal together in person, be joined together, united together in love. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery, the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. I invite you all now to just extend your hands over the elements as we bless them together. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us, the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those who, whom we name before you, those we have named today. Let's take a moment in silence as we remember the names that we have named today. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you now to partake in this meal if you are with someone today, to take a piece of the bread and to say, this is the body of Christ given for you. And to take the cup, to dip it in and say, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. 
holy God. We are so thankful for this mysterious meal, this opportunity to be graced with your presence and to experience a glimpse of heaven. Lord, an opportunity to share a meal with the saints that have gone before us. Lord, as we continue to remember our loved ones who are with you now in eternity, for us left here on earth, though for a short while, I pray that for your comfort, for your healing, for your encouragement, for your equipping, Lord, as we continue to run this race towards perfection, and Lord, sharing your amazing news of great joy, your news of amazing love to our neighbors and to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we worship God through giving. And if it's your time, and if it's your first time with us, or if you are unable to give right now, please don't sweat it. We're just glad you're here. If you are prepared to give, there are many ways that you can give today. You can mail a check to our church, you can give online, or you can give through the Tively app. On behalf of Wesley Church, I want to thank you for saying yes to God's call on your life to be generous. Because of your faithfulness, we can continue to be God's hands and feet to our hurting community and world. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. 
is who you are Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness My God, that is who you are Even when I don't see it, you're working Stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. even when I don't see it. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. darkness my god that is who you are with election day coming up this week i would like to spend some time to center ourselves as followers of jesus around what really matters right now friends in the midst of a very polarized culture and a very painful socio-political climate I want to invite you to, to just pause and remember that our allegiance to Christ comes before allegiance to any political party. You and I are citizens of a kingdom not of this world, but rooted in the almighty God of the, the universe, a kingdom of peace and justice, a kingdom that is already here and is also coming soon in completion. Right? No earthly kingdom can compare to the kingdom of God. So I invite you in the coming days to spend more time in prayer than you do watching the news. Spend more time reading the Bible than you do reading the headlines on Reddit. Spend more time praying for our nation's leaders than you do complaining about them. And in social media especially, in the coming days, let us use our words to build each other up rather than tear one another down. Use your platform to share God's hope and unity rather than division. Remember, we are called as ambassadors of Christ, not representatives of politics. There are people in the body of Christ who will vote differently than you. There are folks who will share a pew with you who might not share the same vote as you. Many of you may be voting differently than I. But the family of God is beautiful, not because we all talk the same, we all think the same, look the same, or even vote the same, but because we love the same. Our common ground is the solid rock, the cornerstone, Jesus Christ, and his sacrificial love and amazing grace poured out for each and every one of us, red or blue or purple. None of us are perfect, yet Christ is perfecting all of us in love. Let's not lose sight of that during this vote. Don't lose sight of that ever. Yes, please go vote, but remember, regardless of the outcome, God is not going anywhere. God is still reigning. Christ is our King. The Holy Spirit will still be here. And remember, your church will still be here. God loves you, and so do we. And now receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the one who is our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Amen. I'm so thankful you joined us for worship today. Go and vote and pray. 
and may the peace of God go with you. And we hope to see you next week. Take care.